Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I was looking at a project that I want to do and so I thought I would share just a little bit so if you're a brand new sewer um, you'll be prepared for this. So many of my coats have been sewn with what we call a button uh, front opening enclosure so it's actually snaps, still a hanger in there, and uh, so the little buttons are sewn on the front. If you want to go to the trouble of making buttonholes, uh, you're you know, more than welcome to do that. I usually just don't have the patience for it, so I use snaps most often. And then I will put the buttons on with the view of a finished garment having buttons come through in a, in a finished way. So for example, if we were to take this coat and have it face away from us, then on a male garment, it overlaps from the left. So I put the buttons on the left side as if the garment were finished and buttoned. Then it would overlap from the left and the buttons would come through the left side. So that's why the buttons aren't sewn on the right side as in an actual garment because then of course this side would have buttonholes it would overlap and then the buttons would come through from the right side to show on the left side. But because I'm not actually doing buttonholes, I sew the buttons on the left side. So just to give a little bit of a overview of why I sew the buttons on the left side because it overlaps and it has the look of being finished. So that's how a lot of the coats are. But I recently posted the pattern for a hoodie type of jacket and I thought with a hoodie you probably would want to put it together with the traditional zipper opening. So I thought we could go over that uh, before you start just so you're prepared. So first of all let's look at a normal zipper. So on a normal zipper we have the the slider part slides up and down and so the ends have a little metal uh, pressed uh, bead, so to speak, around the top that prevents the slider from coming off. And the end is tacked shut. Now sometimes they'll have like a little metal thing. Uh, sometimes it'll be plastic. Um, if you've altered a zipper, it might be cut off and actually just sewn across the bottom to shorten a zipper and make it where you want it, but you attach the ends with some sort of a fastener so that when you unzip it, like so, it stops. That's a regular, normal, everyday zipper. Now to do a jacket though, you're going to need what's called a separating zipper. And a separating zipper, of course, if you have clothing with <laughs> zipper front openings, you know that a zipper that is a separating zipper has a different style at the bottom so that the zipper can dun, 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 come apart. And so it has a feeder side that looks like, let's see how my lighting is and the focus. Of course I chose black. Oh, let's look at a white one. If I can get the... There we go. Throw away that. Here we go. So here's the, the bottom. Looks like this. And then when we unzip it, which I guess I had to open this one anyway for this coat, so it will come apart. Oh, there. That shows much better than the black. So it has a little feeder end. And then it also has, at the bottom of the slider, a stopper. And in the stopper, there's a slit that this will feed into. But there's also just a little tiny stop so that when this feeds through the slider and into this part, it stops. And that's what anchors the ends so that they line up correctly. And so you can zip it. So we put it like this. Pull that in, and then 
it's a lot easier when it's actually in a garment. Sorry, my fingers are all in the way. Hold the bottom. And then we have the zipper. So when you're doing a jacket, you'll need to get a separating zipper. And then also, um, you'll need to be aware of the, the cost difference. Um, a separating zipper is normally more expensive than just a regular zipper, just so you're prepared for that. Now, when I'm gonna make doll clothing and I have a zipper like this, normally um, on these, on a normal zipper, you can just cut it off and sew at the bottom and adjust your length from the bottom so that it's whatever length you need it to be for the garment. But in a separating zipper, you don't want to lose the bottom end. That's the important end. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this down and you're gonna cut from the top end to match whatever length you want. So for example, on this jacket, it's also going to have a, I got fuzzies all over here. It's also going to have a ribbing at the end so if I allow for my seam allowance here, then this is going to be the length of the front. So I'm going to adjust my zipper length to come to here. And so I'm going to be cutting off the top part of the zipper because at the top I can always sew on a bead, just a little white bead and tack off on these teeth and put a bead there so that this will only go to a certain height and then it won't slide off of this side because the important part that you want to keep is this. So when you're doing doll clothing and you're dealing with a separating zipper, don't make the mistake of not paying attention, thinking, okay, I need to be this long and you cut it <laughs> because this is the important part. This is what you're paying for is the end of the zipper that will come apart. Now, if you're an experienced seamstress and sewer, you already know that, but a lot of people on the channel are new sewers and beginners. So I just kind of want to point that out before you start, because very seldom are you going to find a, a separating zipper that is exactly the length you need for your project. Um, usually they're going to come in, well, let's see, this was a 10 inch, um, these are a 10 inch zipper. I've seen them in seven. Then it might go to a 15 and then a 21. And seldom are my garments one of those exact measurements. So again, when you're, you're gonna adjust it, remember that this bottom anchoring part is the part that you're paying for and that's the part that you wanna make sure that you keep. So when you're gonna trim your zipper, the other thing you wanna make sure is after you've trimmed it, and you take them apart because you're gonna sew something on, don't let, like you've, if you've trimmed this and made it shorter, don't lose this part. Don't let it come off and lay somewhere because if you get the bead on there and you sew it on, there's no way to put this back on because you have a stopper at one end and then the other end is gonna be sewn into your garment with some sort of a stopper at this end and you won't be able to get this part back on. So you always wanna make sure that when you're trimming these, you trim from the top, but keep the slider down by the bottom while you're working and while you put that little stop on so that you don't lose that part. So just a little intro into using a separating zipper on your hoodie so that you're kind of prepared for how those work. And here I can zip it up because it's still the original fixture, but you can kind of see this has like a clear little bead. Maybe it'll show, maybe not. I'm afraid to get too close to the camera because then it just won't focus, but there's like a clear little bead pressed on the end there, and that's what keeps the, the slider from coming off. So just a little update on using one of these so that you're um, aware on how to maneuver and uh, trim those off to where you want them. So we just wanted to do that as an uh, intro into making our hoodie project. So I have the, the hood cut out. I have the cuffs for the bottom edge for both the sleeves. And I have the sleeves here. And I think somewhere in my other bag, I have the pockets for the front. So 
we'll go ahead and get started on a hoodie. So to make my uh, hoodie pattern into a coat, I have two pieces for the hood, two sleeves, two front pockets, I have two sleeve cuffs, I have the front, two pieces of the front, the back, and then the cuff ribbing part that will go all the way around the waist, and then of course I have my separating zipper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the hood together with right sides together, and so I'll just place them like this. And I'm going to sew um, around the top of the hood and down the back of the hood. And let's see, maybe I can back up a little bit so I can show you a little bit more of what we're doing here. And then once that's sewn, I was making wigs so they all have fur on them. Um, once that's sewn, then I'm going to turn this back and create just a narrow casing all the way up to the top and then back down the other side that will be for the drawstring um, that will go in later. But first I sew it together around the outside edge and then go ahead and, and create the casing before I put it in the jacket. And um, I'm not going to worry about serging on this because it's um, a knit like sweatshirt fabric and it's not going to fray and so I don't need to worry about that. Um, then on the sleeves, and we've kind of talked about this before, and because I always want to prepare for how stretchy my cuff material might be, because I'm using some uh, reclaimed fabric for this, so this was actually cuffing taking, taken off of a sweatshirt, and I always make my pattern pieces a little bit longer than they might need to be in case this doesn't have a lot of stretch. But as you can see, this has a lot of stretch. So I'm going to cut this so it's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the width of the sleeve hem. And then I'll, when I sew it, I'm going to anchor one end, then I'm going to stretch the unfolded edge, the raw edge, to match the edge of my sleeve and then it will create this natural bow because then it will be more uh, tight around the wrist than around this part. But my pieces are cut longer than they need to be and that's what I did on the pattern. Just because this fabric, depending on what you use, may not have this much stretch to it. So you don't want to cut yourself short because whatever piece you cut, it does need to be able to stretch this entire width because you're going to sew it on here and stretch it as you do so. And if you cut it way too short, like if I was to cut it right here, then you can see that's going to have a hard time, well maybe my hands are out of the way, <laughs> that's going to have a hard time reaching all the way across to the edge of the fabric. So you just want to make sure that you don't cut yourself short when you're cutting your fabric because you can always trim more off later. So that's what we'll do to prepare the sleeves. Then on the front, on my pockets, the first order of business is I'm going to hem this curved edge because that's where the hands will go in. So I'm going to hem that just by turning it over a quarter of an inch. So it'll just be turned in a little and I will probably snip right in the corner and then about a quarter inch on either side of that snip to help that turn in and I'm just going to hem it so that it will be finished on the outside. Then this gets to be a little bit more tricky in that we line it up on the front with the wrong side to the right side because on the finished garment you want the good side and the good side both towards the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is envision where the seam line is on here. So I know this is my rough edge and if you imagine having a quarter inch seam on your pocket like this, I know that this is going to be where it's actually sewn so then I'll just flip it this way and I'll sew just that quarter inch seam 
and then I'll flip it back down and then this seam I'll turn under a quarter inch and I'll go ahead and top stitch here and then top stitch here but I mean you could just fold them over and top stitch right away but I like to have that top one actually sewn down um, before I do that so that will put the pocket on and then I'm going to just stitch inside the seam allowance down the front here and across the bottom just to anchor that pocket in place so I don't have layers of fabric kind of flopping around and then it will be ready to actually put together with uh, the rest of the pieces. So those are my intro things that I'm going to do first and uh, I'll get those done and then we'll come back to the camera. So the sleeves are prepared with the cuff sewn on the bottom so that makes our cuff look like this and hopefully the lighting will allow that to show. <laughs> I don't know why it is I always I'm sewing white on white or black on black <laughs> but so those are my sleeves and the fronts are done so this is what the pocket looks like so it's top stitched at the bottom and the side and it's open there and then I did tack it down so both of those are finished and then the hood is done with the casing and I went ahead and I did turn in the edge of the fabric so that it's got a nice finished edge because when the coat is open that will show. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to top stitch on both sides of that seam allowance but at this point I'm probably thinking I'm not going to I'm just gonna leave it like this but at least the front edge will be finished if that pulls away from the face or is just hanging in the back. My next step will be to put the front and back together at the shoulders with the right sides together. So I'll just lay this on here and stitch across the top. And then for the ease of putting on the sleeves and the hood, once those shoulder seams are sewn, I will be top stitching the seam allowance down just to help it be flat and uh, make it easier to apply the, the sleeves and stuff. So. That's going to be my next step is applying the shoulders to put the shoulders together and top stitch that seam. And then I will go ahead and put in the sleeves and the actual hoodie. And it's, it's pretty simple because once this is opened up like so, then with right sides together, I'm just going to sew that to the edge and I'm going to make the hood edge come to where the seam line will be because then this is going to fold back when I get the zipper in. So I'm not going to sew the hood to the edge of the fabric but rather leave that quarter inch seam allowance so that I can put the zipper in and that that will fold back on the, the edge of the front. So the hood is not designed to go to the very edge of the raw fabric but rather the seam allowance of the front. So I'll do that. And then once this, uh, the shoulders are done, I'll also put in the sleeve. So this will be, let's see, we'll fold it here. There we go. And then this opening here, I'll put the sleeve on with right sides together and uh, sew the sleeve into the sleeve opening. And then once the sleeves are on, we'll come back to the camera. The pieces now are all put together. So I have the hood attached and the sleeves on. And the next thing I'm going to do, because I want the zipper to go not only the length of the front, but the length of the front when the bottom waistband is, a t is applied. So in order to do that, I have to have my sides put together. So before I put the zipper in, I'm going to turn the jacket so that it's inside out and it will look like this and then I'll turn this side inside out like this and I'm going to start at the sleeves and I'm going to take the seam allowance from the cuffs and sew it 
upwards towards the shoulders. So it would look like this. And I'm gonna start at the sleeve um, hem, so up to the underarm and then back down the side because then once the jacket is all put together, then I can put the waistband on the bottom hem because I don't want to put on my zipper until I have that extra length of what the actual length of the front will be when it's complete um, because if I put the zipper on right now, it would only go to here and then I would have that unattached or the, the waistband that would not have part of the zipper on it. So we're going to go ahead and do the underarms first and then down the sides so that that will actually put the rest of the jacket together. And then once it's put together, we'll go ahead and put on the waistband. Here again, I'm going to do that the same way that I did the cuffs on the sleeves. So my waistband is less length than the actual opening of the jacket. And so I will start it. What I'm going to do is actually pin the center and pin the center back just to kind of help hold it in place and then stretch it, get to that center back and then stretch it the rest of the way so that this will be stretched to match the length of the hem. And uh, when that's on, then it will be ready to add the zipper to finish it. So we'll do this and I'll put on the waistband and then we'll come back to the camera. Now the jacket is put together. So all we need to do is to add the zipper to the front finish up a little bit about the neckline and put in the drawstring. So for the zipper, I want the zipper to go almost down to the very edge. So there's lots of different ways to put on a zipper, but this is the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to trim this end yet. I'm going to go ahead and line up my zipper so that the bottom end, the plastic part, is even with the edge of the coat, which will mean the end of the actual fabric of the zipper will be a little bit upwards. Because if you take the end of the fabric to the hem, then this is going to stick out. So I'm going to have it up a little bit so that this will not go past the edge of the finished hem. And I'm just going to sew it on the right side of the fabric with the zipper uh, slider pull towards the good side of the fabric. And I'm just going to tack it down along the very edge of the zipper. Then what I'll do is I will turn that in like so and top stitch the front down. Once the zipper is actually attached to the fabric, then I'll turn it and then top stitch the, the front edge. And then what I'll do is I'll leave this on until I get up to the top and get it all sewn on like this because the front edge of my coat, see how there's like a half inch, maybe five eighths of an inch from the hood to the edge. So it's gonna be turned in with the zipper on, but then once I cut it off, it's gonna fold down so that this edge will be attached to it, and that's all gonna fold down to have a nice folded edge of fabric. And then also, I would move this back down out of the way, like this, and fold it. It'll fold down, and that way I know how long it needs to be and then I'll trim off what I don't need after it's sewn on. So then I can have enough excess that I'll have enough to turn down and finish sewing that in place. And then I can put a little bead at the top to prevent that coming up and off of the zipper. But that way I don't cut this off too low and then not have enough to finish my garment. So I'm going to sew this side on with the zipper uh, pull towards the right side of the fabric. Then likewise, this is going to be with the zipper side going like this side, the zipper teeth will go that way. And on this one, the zipper teeth will go this way. And I'm just going to tack that on the edge. Then I'll turn it in and top stitch it 
so that it looks nice and do the same up here so that I have enough to work with so once it's attached I can trim off and have enough excess to fold it over and get it out of the way and then I know I haven't cut it too short. So anyhow that's how I'm going to go ahead and put the zipper in. Then once the zipper is in I'm simply going to use a large uh, yarn needle and poke a little hole and put my drawstring through and then have of course enough drawstring to hang and probably secure the end of that with a little um, clear bead or white bead to match the coat and then we'll be done and we'll see how it fits onto one of the fellas. Oh, I thought I'd better mention uh, before we get started and I come back to do the work with the zipper I'm going to be using a zipper foot that came with my machine uh, because then you don't have all of this other plastic in the way of the teeth so that you have a surface that can sew right to the edge of the teeth and uh, not get all caught up and get it stuck underneath the foot so I will be using a zipper foot to apply the zipper. Now I have the zipper tacked down to my coat and here you can actually see part of my little pocket because that was just a little seam to hold the zipper in place so it's not going to shuffle and move around a lot. Now my next step to finish off the zipper is you want to have enough space on the zipper fabric for the zipper to actually slide. I'm kind of using the wrong hand there. There we go. So you want you don't want to sew so close to the edge of the teeth that your zipper slide won't go back and forth. So it, rather than just stop stitching right here, like stitching again here and trying to fold it out, I wouldn't have enough space for the teeth. And then if I try top stitching from the top, a lot of times you'll get too close to the teeth and then the zipper won't work. So this is how I'm going to finish out the zipper. From the inside, I'm going to fold the zipper over to the inside of the jacket and I'm going to maneuver the fabric so that I see a little tiny edge of the fabric on the outside of the teeth so that they're kind of hidden underneath that fold of fabric. But when I sew, I'm going to sew right back over the top of the seam that I already used, maybe in just a tiny bit more, but that's going to leave like from the edge of my thumbnail up to the teeth, it'll leave that much room so that the zipper will still have room to slide on there. And so that's how I'm going to finish that. I'm not going to sew way up by the teeth. I'm just going to sew a little bit in from the seam where I tacked the zipper to the fabric, all the while folding this back so that just a little bit of the fabric shows so on the finished project it will be top stitched and the fabric will cover up the edge of the teeth so they won't be sticking out. So that way when it's finished and zipped up you'll have fabric meeting fabric and the teeth will kind of be camouflaged inside of that. So that's how I'm going to do the finishing part of the zipper. Be aware this might still stick out just a little bit but that's okay. And then also it's going to be real thick over where the band meets the, the actual coat and then where you have a couple little layers dealing with the pocket. So you just kind of have to go slow, don't try to rush it, but that's how I'm going to finish up the zipper. I still have not trimmed this because I want to get it all sewn on and then I will move the slide down on my zipper and I'm kind of coming at a weird angle here. so the zipper with my other hand. There we go. He's not very happy with me today. Then I will go ahead and trim off what I don't need of the zipper and then fold that down and finish off the neckline with my zipper properly in place so that when I fold it down I'm not going to affect the way the zipper works. So I'm not going to trim this until it's all the way sewn on. And then I'll go ahead and finish that up. So, and then once that's in, I will probably top stitch this neck edge um, 
probably down as well and top stitch around where the hoodie meets the neckline um, on the actual jacket section rather than the hoodie section. So I'll top stitch that down and I'll probably snip along the necklines a little bit to kind of help open that up and go around the corner of the, you know, the curve of the neckline, but just to stitch that down and hold it down. So that's how I'm going to finish that out. And uh, I just kind of wanted to show what that intermediate step looks like before I finish and then how I determine what I'm going to do and how I finish that um, just so it's a little bit more clear for you. And here is our finished product. So here is the, the hoodie. We'll spin them around and uh, it's got the drawstring in the hood. The hood is a little large so if you'd like to scale that down then yeah, that's something you might want to do. Um, also, the sleeves are kind of puffy because he has a long sleeve shirt underneath that. And let's see if I can unzip while I'm actually holding a camera here. Maybe. I have to switch it out a little bit. Ah, there we go. So there's the, the zipper closure and how that looks on the front. And then if I pull this up, let's see, I'll switch my hands out here. And uh, yeah, see, so the hood is very large, so you might want to make it a little bit smaller if you'd like. And then here are the strings, so they just have a, a bead. Oh, it's not wanting to focus very well. A bead on the end and a little double knot. Um, and then, yeah, so that's what the hoodie pattern turns out like. If you want to go ahead and put the separating zipper as the closure. So there you go. Happy sewing and I'll see you next time. Bye.